Hello everybody, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are gonna be looking at how to design a rigid flex stack up from scratch. And at the end of this video, I'm even gonna give you a little tool that's gonna to help you very quickly design a manufacturable rigid flex stack up. Now we received a good question about designing rigid flex stack ups and in one of the other tutorial videos on the channel, unfortunately we didn't show how to design the stack up specifically. The person running the tutorial just imported the stack up from a template. Now at the end of the video, I am going to give you a template that you can use to create your own rigid flex stack ups. And of course templates are very useful, but what about the principles for designing a rigid flex stack up manually? That's what we're gonna go over in this video. And we're gonna do that by analyzing an example of a board that I have manufactured in the past. So let's go ahead and get started. Now in this video, we're gonna be looking at rigid flex PCB stackups and what are some of the basic principles you need to understand to build them from scratch. Now this all came up from a comment that was left on one of the tutorial videos on the channel. Let's go ahead and take a look at that comment. Michael Brown writes, what is not explained is manually creating the rigid flex stack up for those that do not have a template to import. Well, guess what, Michael Brown? I'm gonna give you a template anyways. You can go check out the link in the description and you will be able to download that stack up file and use it as a template in your Altium projects. All you have to do is go into the layer stack manager inside Altium, go to file and load from file. You'll be able to select that stack up file and it will import all of those layer settings into your PCB stack up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple of things. First, in order to understand the materials that we're working with to build rigid flex stack ups and some of the basic principles that you need to understand to work with those materials and create a manufacturable stack up, we're gonna look at a couple of websites that show some stack up examples. We'll go through and analyze what exactly they're doing as they create those stack up designs. Then we'll dig into the stack up template file that I've provided for download and we'll see how those principles are applied to create that template. The first website I wanna look at is pcbmay.com. Not pcbway, but pcbmay.com. And you may know pcbmay as a Chinese PCB manufacturer. And here on their website, they have a pretty good webpage about flexible circuit board design. As you scroll down here, you can actually see some examples of flex and rigid flex PCB stackups. Now I've talked about a little bit about this stuff before in a video a few years ago, and we only looked at the flex end of it. We didn't actually look too deeply at the rigid side of a rigid flex PCB stack up. And they go a little deep here into looking at how you get the rigid portion into this design. The other website that we're gonna look at in just a moment does the same. So here, as you scroll through this section of the page, you'll see that there are a couple of different ways to get your base flexible layer with copper into your rigid flex PCB stack up. And the first is shown right here, and they haven't called it out specifically, but this layer stack that you see here with the polyimide and then copper above and below is known as adhesiveless polyimide. And this can actually be used as the base for your flex or rigid flex PCB stack up. So once you have that polyimide and coated with copper, you can then attach layers on top of it or below it using an adhesive. And this is what they start to show in this example stack up where they have a four layer flex stack up with polyimide as the base material. So using the adhesive, you can stack another layer of polyimide, which then attaches to another copper layer and use that repeated stack to then build up your flex portion of your rigid flex PCB. And that's basically what they're showing here in this part of the web page. Now, farther down on the page, they show a drawing from a company that I think quite a few people are familiar with. And this drawing format actually comes from EPEC Engineering. And I have the EPEC rigid flex page up here in this other tab. So EPEC Engineering is a pretty well-known company. I think they've been around for quite a long time and they do have some good design guides on their website. And here I'm on their common flex and rigid flex PCB constructions page. So here they go over several examples of how you can construct different types of rigid flex PCBs. So we'll run over all of these different types here as we scan through this page. But here you can see that they've taken a couple of different approaches just from these first few flex stack up 
examples. In this first example, we have for a two-layer flex. They've also used an adhesiveless polyimide coated with copper as their base material. And then you can see they apply an adhesive followed by the cover lay in order to finish this PCB stack up. Here's another example where they have a three layer, multi-layer rigid flex PCB. Here you can see they start with the adhesiveless polyimide coated with copper. They then use an adhesive to attach another adhesiveless polyimide sheet, and then another layer of adhesive to attach the final cover lay. So again, they're using this repeated alternating dielectric and adhesive kind of stack in order to stack all of the layers together. So this adhesiveless polyimide basically comes coated with copper already, or what you can do is you can take the approach shown over here in the PCB May page, and you can have uncoated polyimide that is attached to different copper layers using adhesive and you can build up the stack up that way. So you have either option to build up the flex section of your PCB stack up. So how do we get the rigid portion of the design into our rigid flex stack up? Well, it depends if you're just using FR4 as a simple stiffener or if you're actually using FR4 and copper layers and building that into the rigid flex stack up. And those are not actually the same thing. So let's take again a look at the EPEC page. You can see an example of how a stiffener is used here on the three layer multi-layer flex stack up. Here you can see that they use an adhesive to attach the rigid FR4 section onto the top of the cover lay. It could also just be attached directly onto the copper and then you would have a little cut right here where the cover lay adhesive and the cover lay actually end. And that's what we're gonna see here in the template that I'll show in just a moment. Now in this example where we have an FR4 stiffener, you'll notice here that the FR4 stiffener just provides some rigidity to this section of the stack up. There's no routing or vias or anything going through that FR4 stiffener. It's purely to provide some rigidity. But what about the typical rigid flex construction where you have layers in that rigid section that you can route into using vias? Well, that's where we have something a little more elaborate where we have, again, the standard FR4 core and prepreg construction that then gets attached onto our flex section, as you can see here with these two layer and three layer rigid flex stack ups. Now here you can see that the prepreg just bonds directly to the polyimide core or to the copper on top of the polyimide core. It doesn't need an adhesive. Basically the prepreg is your adhesive. Then that prepreg bonds to an FR4 core or it bonds directly to a sheet of copper on top of it. And then that forms the signal layer in your rigid section that can then be accessed through vias into the flex section. One thing to note here is that when you have your flex section spanning into the center of your rigid section, you'll notice that the cover lay and the cover lay adhesive are terminated at the edge of this prepreg. They don't have to extend all the way underneath. And again, that's because you have this prepreg, which is acting as the adhesive layer directly onto the copper in the flex section. So this forms the general template that we can use in order to build a rigid flex stack up in our PCB design software. We can start with polyimide adhesiveless core or base material that's coated with copper. It gets covered with a coverlay adhesive followed by a coverlay in the flex section. Then in our rigid section of our rigid flex PCB, we rely on the prepreg in order to bond the FR4 core and any other copper signal layers that then appear in the rigid section and connect to our flex section with vias. Now, of course, once you're in the rigid section, everything above this FR4 core then bonds onto the rigid section in the standard way where you could have alternating prepreg and core layers going all the way through that stack up and building up to any number of layers that you like. Same thing over here on this edge, right? If we had the same kind of rigid stack up on this edge, we would do the exact same thing. We would continue to alternate prepreg and core layers as we build up the rigid section of the stack up and then we'd add more copper in between to form our signal layers. So now that we've looked at some example flex stack ups and we know a little bit more about how the materials are used, let's take a look at this template in Altium. Here you can see I have a blank PCB doc open, but inside this PCB doc, we have the stack up file template loaded into this PCB. And so you can see here, we're in the rigid flex mode and we can see our rigid branch over here on the left. And then we have our flex branch over here 
on the right. Now here on the left, you can see that we have basically a six layer rigid section for our PCB. We have a thick prepreg on the outer side, we have our signal layers on the top and bottom, and then we have four internal layers. Now these four internal signal layers also form our flex ribbon, as you can see here as I zoom in. We've constructed this using the same principle that I showed on the website. You can see here that we have our prepreg bonding directly to the copper on that flex section of that PCB. And that prepreg also is then coated with copper. Now I could have a core layer here that is bonded to the signal layer on the flex section with this prepreg. That's another acceptable way to do this, but you could just take this prepreg and put signal directly on top of it as I've done here. And then of course this is made symmetric so it's mirrored from the top half down as you can see here. We have the same prepreg on the bottom and then our signal layer on the bottom. We have our four flex layers. How are these four flex layers constructed? Well, we've taken the adhesiveless polyimide approach as the core or as the central section of our flex section in this PCB stack up. So here you can see I have a prepreg, but there's no adhesive between this signal layer and this signal layer on L2 and L3 in this prepreg. So we have this polyimide, which basically functions as a prepreg, and there's no adhesive. So this is adhesiveless polyimide. Then in order to bond the next layers above and below that adhesiveless polyimide section, we then have to apply an adhesive, and then we have a polyimide sheet, and then we have another adhesive layer, which then bonds our copper on top of it. And again, we have a symmetric stack up, so we've done the same thing on the bottom half of this design. We have the adhesive, we have the polyimide section, and then we have another layer of adhesive to bond L4, this signal layer on the bottom side. So now we have our four layer flex ribbon part of this rigid flex stack up. And of course we could extend this to more and more layers, but unfortunately as you start to extend that flex section to more and more layers, it gets thicker, it gets more difficult to bend, and you're restricted in the bending radius that you can apply in this flex ribbon without creating a lot of stress on the copper traces in this design. How do we finish this portion of the stack up? Well, we finish it by applying a cover lay, but then of course we need to apply a cover lay adhesive on the top signal layer and the bottom signal layer in order to bond that cover lay on the top and bottom of this flex section. And so that's what you see here. Now you see here that there is a warning that comes up in the layer stack manager. And this warning is telling you that there is a materials mismatch. Now remember, we're doing a rigid flex design where the rigid section has additional signal layers beyond what you see in this flex section. So there will be a materials mismatch as you see here. The cover lay only runs right up to the edge of the prepreg, and same thing here. The cover lay adhesive also runs right up to the edge of the prepreg. And again, this matches the guidance that we saw on the EPEC website earlier in the video. So this basically covers everything that we need to know about designing the flex section and the rigid section in a rigid flex stack up. We've covered the flex section, as you can see here. We've covered the rigid section where we're including a prepreg as well as signal layers that don't occupy the flex region of the stack up. And then we've also shown how to basically do the same thing but with a simple FR4 stiffener and an adhesive. Now if you want to use this stack up in your own rigid flex designs, you can just go into the video description and download the stack up file that contains all of this layer information. And to get it into your PCB stack up, just open up your PCB in Altium, open up the layer stack manager, go to file and load stack up from file, navigate to your stack up file and import it into your PCB stack up. Thanks for watching this video, everybody, and don't forget to download that stack up file for use in your PCB design projects. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comment section. And last but not least, don't forget to call your rigid flex fabricator, folks. We'll see you next time. Yeah.